a function or almost a function. Iron rule is if ramp time is less than tau constant, tau, tau, uh, tau is a time constant of conduct, then we can bravely assume that we have simply a step function. In this case, our current behaves as exponent. This car creates magnetic field where? Everywhere. In particular, in a point of observation. So that's what I presented. Magnetic field as function of time equal, for example, primary magnetic field, which existed before, some coefficient, geometrical factor, and times exponent. Why geometrical factor? It's very natural because the deeper our target, this something not clear, eh? not clear, I feel, huh? the deeper our target, the smaller what? Primary <coughs> flux, magnetic field weaker than now. Then we have to calculate magnetic field due to this or body. Therefore, again, geometrical parameters according to Biosavaro involved. So it's natural to present in this for magnetic field at any point equal primary field, which was before. Now it does not exist because we turn off. Then some coefficient, non-dimensional, which depends on geometry, it times our exponent. Is it understandable or not? Is it clear, this behavior? I hope clear. Now, does, what is it? Geometrical factor, correct? And depends also on current on transmitter, which was before turn off. Then this current, according to Biosavar law, creates this magnetic field. So it's convenient to present in this simple form. Very useful presentation. Again, this behavior for case of the ring is valid within early stage, intermediate, and late. For all real cases, situation a little more complicated. This equation is not correct for early stage, for real conductors, not intermediate, but it's completely correct for the most important range of time, late stage, so-called late stage. What does late stage? Means when time is greater than tau. Now, uh, as soon as we got result, it's not too bad to extract geophysical aspects from this behavior. That's the most important. Let us start to extract, and then we will add. We will come to real conductors. Uh, set. Now, <coughs> early stage. According our definition, when time is less than time constant, this term is equal one. But even half one doesn't matter. What matters? Field is function only geometrical parameters. In other words, it does not contain any information about conductivity. So, nobody likes early stage. And nobody works in early stage. And this example vividly illustrates this idea. Now, completely different story at late stage. As I told you, at this equation, which was derived from simple example, valid always for confined conductor. What does it mean valid always? Coefficient could be different because different shape of the body, different depth, but dependence on the time is always the same. Exponential decay. As I, since it's important, fundament, fund, at least fundamental, universal part in our geophysics, I am not lazy to repeat. Regardless what is the shape conductor, what is resistivity, 
doesn't matter, uniform, not uniform, if it's a confined conductor, doesn't matter what is the shape transmitter, where transmitter located, you turn off current, and I promise you, regardless how you turn off, turn off a step function, change ram time, the K will be this, at late stage. As soon time of measurement exceeds time constant, you will have this exponential decay. So let us concentrate, uh, pay our attention, late stage, and find something. And then I will generalize these results for arbitrary conductors. If you don't have questions. Uh, we have several types of the noise in all methods, you know, as I know. Man-made noise, external man-made noise, power station, different electromagnet electromagnetic fields. This noise is sometimes very serious obstacle. But with this noise, with time, we are fighting better and better and better and better. But there is geological noise. That's formidable problem sometimes. Because you cannot remove, you cannot reduce without, without, some, special, without some special approaches inside of geophysics. And that's what about what I'm going to speak with you. Geological noise cannot be removed at all. It's reality as our target. Sometimes it makes the, it forms that end of the method. And very often that end. So it's very natural to pay attention one ratio. Field caused by useful signal over field caused by noise. That's real criteria, measure of efficiency of any method. The stronger, the, the greater this ratio, the better method. The smaller, the worse. And so it's not too bad to compare direct current, frequency method, transient method from one point of view. Ratio between useful signal and noise. That's what I'm going to start to do. I will do it several times. <coughs> Again, where we are now, something far away from us. But we are, we are considering effect caused by induced currents in our body, in any in homogeneity, confined conductor. We don't speak about other currents. So simple, simple models. Let me do the following. First of all, let me remind what happens when we have direct current method. M and B. We are moving array. We plot apparent resistivity curve. If I remember correctly, I took external medium 100 ohmometers, here 10 minus 3, 10 minus 1. Four, yes, two orders difference, correct? But I at least told you, you remember surface charges, relation surface charges with the electrical field, I told you, surface charges which arise here depends not only resistivity of target, but contrast coefficient, which changes very little, K1, 2. So it means practically we get the same anomaly. If that was the real reason why direct current methods stop to be used, practically stop to use for mining prospecting, but it was time when they were used widely before Second War. Now, let us ask ourselves, what happens in time domain method? Even we take unrealistic model, ring and non-conducting medium, but I promise we will come more realistic. 
So I have two rings. Just a second. Not good picture. Again, it's not exact result. It's only designed to illustrate concept. One body has time constant. Suppose that's noise. That's our body, useful signal, our body. Let us assume that we are moving with our system, transmitter. Oh, my God. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I simply change if there are complaints. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So, we have two conductors, different time constant. Let us assume that our uh, noise is more resistant. That's natural to assume. What happens with time constant? Hmm? Small. small. Time constant will be small. So, let me take this time constant let uh, or body. Let us use one. Now, what is the field over this body? Bz equal B not Z, some function D, E minus T tau noise. That's due to this conductor. Due to this conductor, we have B noise here. Bz R equal B not C D, the same body, C minus C R. Let us solve simple, simple problem. We solve it for direct current methods. We will solve for frequency later. And now I'm taking two extreme cases, DC and time domain. Can we compare anomalies at different times? When we go to the field, we know we measure at different times. So let first of all, let us take early stage. Early stage. What does early stage mean? When time will be very small with respect to time constant. Then this quantity one, this quantity one, and ratio the same. So as DC, DC current. So we created equipment, make much more complicated than DC equipment profiling, but result is the same. So it shows red light forbidden to work at early stage. Equipment clever, does not require contact, but it much more complicated than simple DC profiling. Direct DC means direct current profiling. Now Schlumberger. Now let be patient. Let us wait. Let happens when time increases. Let us take ratio. Useful signal. That's useful signal over noise. Over body over noise. Can you perform simple arithmetic? I specially took two similar bodies, only difference, different time constant, different conductivities, let us say clearly. These two coefficients disappear, and we have E minus T over tau or body minus E T over tau noise. Or simply E T I take out tau our body minus T how nice. Is it correct? Is it correct or not? If, if it's not correct, I'm ready to be to, to, to correct. Huh? You need to do that. Huh? You know that uh, tau of the uh, noise, uh, sorry, the tau of the noise is small and the, and the bottom, front, bottom uh, the denominator is one. Something wrong? No, no, I'm saying you need to go through that step. You know that uh, the denominator is going to be equal to 1 when... Uh, when tau equals 0. Yeah, yeah. When, 
please please help me I I'm I'm lo lo lost yeah, I'm possibly lost too. so no just a second <laughs> so we will we will be both lost in the same force I take ratio clear this ratio is equal this ratio of exponent clear See? ratio of exponent equal one exponent and mathematicians I'm right yeah, good now so uh, uh, right now what we see from this ratio at mom at early stage this ratio as we expected one so if I plot graph profiling over this body first my anomaly I will get the same anomaly Understandable noise, and huh? It's correct, eh? Yes. Yeah. Or both? Not the same, but the same. <laughs> Aha! I don't see. Yes, I see. Now, what happens with increasing of time in this case? Hmm? This tau r greater than tau noise. Therefore first term is smaller than second there brackets quantity negative or positive hmm? negative so the here minus so all together positive so with increasing time exponent will grow or will go down grows so with a signal becomes smaller but ratio becomes great simple example but it in a sense in essence it's a reason for introduction time domain time is filtrator filter time for such models it will allow to enchant signal due to our body both signal goes down but with different rate so, as if equipment is very well, able to measure smaller signals for such conditions, with increasing time you improve, improve ratio. So it means simply you don't see noise. Think about it in, from different point of view. Suppose it's not rings, complicated bodies, conducting medium. One way to solve forward problem in extremely complicated medium and then try to compare results of measurements with awful result with all results solution of awfully difficult forward problem. That's one way. There is another way, understanding physics, behavior of the field, measuring at greater times and removing medium removing everything except our body they just simply disappear they become transparent they don't exist at later time so you don't need to solve extremely complicated problems only time and physical basis helps you to do it now so there is a moment when signal due to our body will be 10 times more than Signal due to noise, so simply you have only useful signal. Your results become clear. Now, let us assume that noise and time constant noise or body are the same. Disaster. Why disaster? Regardless of the time, this brackets is equal zero and x time does not help. That's, that's, it means for these geological conditions, whether you change radius of loop, increase or decrease current, change ram time, nothing will happen. That's the dead end for application of the method, or at least great decrease of its efficiency. 
Now, let us take opposite case. Even noise, but big noise. So time constant of the noise greater. Then everything even will be worse. With increasing time, signal from the noise will only increase. Again, this way of thinking, not this model, but way of thinking, uh, shows always we have that end. But when we have favorable conditions of the method, we are able to drastically improve with respect uh, resolution of the method, sensitivity with respect to noise useful signal, if we compare with direct current method. Let me look at this model from different point of view, as I did for direct current. Just a second. <coughs> Exactly the same. At uh, all time, I will do the same. Let us consider the following very reasonable situation. You have conductor noise. You have or body here. You have your loop. You turn off transmit, trans current and transmitter. What we will measure here? Effect due to noise and useful signal. Our, our signal is, now unlike previous case, we have a sum, be noise or R. R. <coughs> Now, let me write a little expression for B noise, B not primary field. It's a simply normalization factor. Then Dn. What does it mean Dn? Geometrical factor which describes position of noise. It's closer, by the way. Don't, let us not forget about it. It could be period. Times exponent t minus tau noise. Let us take BZR, B not DR. Why? Because this body is deeper. And we can already make some conclusion from common sense. Times E minus T G R. Now I would like to take ratio of them, because I measure total signal. I would like to find time when this contribution, this signal will contribute a little. I will not notice it. Let us, what we have to do in this case? G R divide G noise. Since noise or body, or body. Deeper, usually DR, geometrical factor, smaller. Because it's a deeper. Shallow, bigger. Now, so when time, let me rewrite it again, DR, DN, E minus time, tau R minus unit tau N. So when we measure at small times, what would happen? This ratio could be very small. So you simply don't noise screens effect from our body. Because that's one, dr less than dn, small. You mainly measure effect from noise. Then time increases. Time increases, exponent becomes bigger. Aha, uh -huh, there is a moment when at this point you will measure sig total signal where effect due to noise or body will become parallel. Then if you increase time more, this exponential behavior will change completely situation. And it will be moment 
may be a moment, depends on parameters, when signal due to noise will become unmeasurable, small. Total signal goes down. But for us important what contributes main part, which 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 uh, target, which body contributes the main part. So time produces filtration, upper in homogeneity becomes transparent. But this concept transparent you will see in different phase for soundings. So no common features with DC matter. I state in spite of no, let me let me tell you. We have a few minutes more. Let me tell a little story. <coughs> Theory of electromagnetic fields caused by a transient field was known before Second War. In classical textbooks was uh, was described solution due to sphere, cylinder, one step functions. Everything was done practically from beginning of this century, from mathematical point. Then, uh, after Second War in the in West, also this method was patterned, patterned in the West, and again it was patterned as method of measurements, unlike frequencies. But only at the end of the fifties was realized. The main advantage of this method, using all this simple model, main advantage of time domain with respect to DC current methods and frequency methods in favorable conditions, always there is a boundary, is the fact that this method reduces better influence of geological noise. What does it mean we reduce influence geological noise? It means you can see bo our body Keep it. That's all. That's the main enemy. Practically in all, except some special conditions of extremely high man-made noise, this is the main enemy. Lateral changes of resistivity in upper part of the medium. And that's what you only can use. Shovel and remove. That's only one way. Or in favorable conditions to using measuring and large times. Now, that's concept. Now, so, there is a, a decrease of geological noise. It's not only sim it's not only makes picture better, but it also increases depth of investigation. That's vital. Now, now let me show you some time constants. I understand we started a little later, correct? Hmm? When did we start? Twenty past. Huh? Twenty past. Twenty past. Thank you. So we have more thirty minutes. Good. Very good. So let us move forward. Let me give you examples of some time constants. For instance, if spherical conductor, it radius A conductivity gamma, so no more rings, no more rings. Time constant is equal gamma, mu, naught, a square divided by square. So all spherical conductors are the same. Spherical have the same co time constant. So it's what is important. Time constant is not only proportional conductivity, it's proportional area. A square. Now let me take another uh, example. Suppose we have a disk. It's 
some disk. With conductance S. What does conductance S? It means, please imagine, thin disk with thickness H and conductance equal gamma times H. If you place this disk in a magnetic field, induced current starts to decay and time constant is equal mu S A divided by 5.5. For instance, let us take, doesn't matter, it could be horizontal, vertical, as soon as field intercepts, induced current arises, and at late stage, field will decay E minus T over tau. So for sphere, for disk, will decay in this way. Let me take maybe more example, then we'll take numbers. For example, cylinder, circle cylinder. Very long cylinder. Time constant is equal sigma mu not a square divided by approximate uh, uh, just a moment uh, 5.8. Watch, not very great difference here. Pi square 10, 9. Here, around 6. Now let us take something close to more real models. Uh, suppose we have plate, but plate at the beginning with the elliptical cross section. That's A, that's B, and there is component of the field perpendicular. Then <coughs> cross section, that's B, that's B half, semi axis, time constant equal sigma mu naught b square over 3. Do what I write clear? Now, let me take another example. Let, there are many examples. Uh, let me take a conducting plate. Conducting plate. That's length L1, that's L2. Thin plate. Is it clear or I, I am ready to repeat? Hmm? Clear? Yeah, explain the one after the cylinder. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, that's cylinder. Uh, what is the next one? Uh, cylinder, but with elliptical cross section. Not circle, but elliptical cross section. Huh? Just, just quickly ask what sigma is. That, that six is a sigma. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Sigma conductivity? Uh, C, uh, for the cylinder. Cylinder? The very first, yeah. This cylinder. So sigma conductivity, mu. Yeah. Alex, you switched from... Ah, oh, 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 I know why I'm switched. I thought it was a C. Oh, I am <laughs> deeply, deeply sorry. Deeply, deeply sorry. It's a gamma, uh, gamma. I'm sorry. It's gamma. Now, let me take plate. Let me take plate. Uh, L1, L2. Gamma. Now, time constant. First of all, let us consider infinite long plate as cylinder. Let us do it. Then, tau p is equal mu naught s, because thin, L1 divided by 8. So, if you have in L2, extremely long infinity time constant has this value now let us consider what is the time constant if we have finite length 
L2. So let me write the following. Here L2 over L1, here tau over tau plate, infinite long plate. So if one is equal 0.77, what is it? Time constant when the length a long strike is equal length L1, then time constant of such plate is 0.8 of infinitely long. Clear? That's infinitely long. Now, if you take square L2 equal L1, it's 0.77. Now, if I took two length a long strike twice more than L1, then time constant it's almost already 0.94. So I can use almost analytical expression. <coughs> if I take four for all practical purposes, one. So what does it mean? It means the folding. If you have play, it doesn't matter, vertical, horizontal, it doesn't, it's not important. Uh, as soon as two extension, two, three times more than width L1, time constant can be calculated using this expression. Now, there are many other examples I don't, is it clear what are, clear? Yeah, if you're profiling across the longest Sorry? Across the it does not depend where transmitter, where receiver, what is the profile. It does. Time constant is the quantity which characterizes, we will discuss about it, only body. It does not, uh, that's a very good, otherwise I could forget when I was going. Uh, uh, let me return back to this question. <coughs> so, I will remove and let me do the folding. <coughs> we now we consider late stage. So for any conductor, confined, only confined conductor, iron rule is we are all any component of field, vertical, L could be vertical, horizontal, any component, L means direction, is equal B naught, B naught, L, primary field in this direction, some coefficient DL, because it depends on component which we measure, times E minus T over tau. Now, late stage. Let us discuss about two main parameters which describe secondary field caused by our body. There are only two parameters, not three, not four, for each component. One time constant. It does not depend where is your transmitter located. It does not depend at which point you measure. It does not depend on where is your body located. It does depend on conductivity and shape of the body and its dimensions. So if I take X component, time constant will be tau. If I take Y component, time constant will be tau. So it does not depend which component you measure. It, you can change position of your loop where you would like. At late stage, tau will be the same for all points and for all components. Now, tau is independent, as I told you, where you measure depth or 
orientation of the body with respect to look. No. This information comes from this coefficient. That coefficient, on one hand, is independent on conductivity, all, but it depends on rest. Where you measure, where your transmitter, what is the shape of the body, what is the orientation of the body. It's an excellent, from interpretation point of view, excellent separation of duties. Now, now I would like to consider with you one, two examples, numerical examples of time constant. Let us take, for example, plate. With conductivity, let us take 10, 3. Reasonable? Now, let us take thickness 20 meters. And let us assume that, uh, even let us do the following. Let us take 5 meters here, 5 meters here, 20 meters here, and very long. It's a very conductive material, so let us make extension 20 meters, 5 meters, uh, conductivity 10, 3. Let us I gave you time constant. It's equal approximately mu naught S A. That's A. A divided by 8. 4 pi, 10 minus 6. Conductivity 10, 3. Thickness. <coughs> 5 <coughs> times 20 and divide by 8. I think we are in good shape. 4 pi, 10 minus 6, 10, 3, 5, S, 20 divided by 8. 4 pi, it's a 10. 10 and 8 meter. Uh, Council, 100. Point one second. If we didn't make four pi, I made mistake. You didn't tell. Huh? Seven. That's seven. Seven. So point oh one second. Let us check again. Four pi ten minus seven. 10, 3, 5, 20, divide by 8, 4 pi 8, cancel, 100, correct, 10 milliseconds. That's much better. Certainly, if we will not take 10, 3, especially take 1,000, if you take 100, so time constant to 1 millisecond. It, that it becomes very, very typical. So what we can say, if our gates are such that we measure after time 10 millisecond in this case, we will observe this behavior. Did you check me? Numbers are correct. What's the time constant for plate again? Time constant for plate is tau equal mu naught S A divided by 8. What is L? L is a, this dimension. I goes into infinity, in not infinity, 4 or 5 times. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. I didn't realize. Yes, that. yes, okay. yes, yes. So before we discuss, when its extension three, four times, two times greater, then you can use this expression with very good accuracy. So 
that's example. Now, now let us again. It's the simply simps, simplest example, which does not take into account influence of surrounding medium, only compares cases when noise also can find conductors. Tomorrow, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, I will explain what happens in conducting. Now, what we are doing, we still use our simple equation. So let us move to frequency domain. Oh no, 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 Not, I almost was ready to miss. Let me tell you something what always true without, without derivations. In the case of current ring, current ring, our magnetic field BLC equal B naught L G E T minus tau. What happens in real cases? In all the real cases. In all real cases happens the following. Regardless what is the conductor, shape, size, doesn't matter. Magnetic field, each component magnetic field can be presented in the following simple, simple way. B not L, primary field at some point, each component L at some point, sum GN E minus T R tau N, where N unity uh, infinity. Nobody cares about it. But it's not too bad to know expression for the field, which is always correct as soon as we deal with confined conductor. It could be sphere, it could be plate, it could be anything what you would like. Even you cannot describe it, uh, it in a uh, help of formulas, but results always will be the same. Let us discuss what is written here. Field X, Y, Z component, primary, any component, primary field, times sum of coefficients. These coefficients don't have dimension because this field took care about dimension. Now, what is it? So we see field at early, intermediate, and late stage is defined by set of parameters. D oh, I, my small mistake, DNL. D1L, D2L, D3L, if L to 3, 3L, D4, L, and so What is here? Tau 1, tau 2, tau 3, tau 4, and so Coefficients, geometrical factors, which depends which component you measure. This number don't depend on uh, uh, component. Now, what do we know about behavior of these coefficients? First coefficient, tau one, one equal time constant. That's what I gave you. Now, what about relationship between them? Tau one. Always it's true. So with increasing time, what happens? Let us look together. Here t over tau 1 or tau. When time is small, all coefficients are important. And still, only ge geometry makes influence at early stage. It's no more one exponent, it's a sum of exponents. Now, that's our early stage, no more exponential behavior. But we don't care, we are not interested by early stage. Now, what happens with increasing time? T 
taking into account this inequality. Can you help me? Exactly, because this number becomes denominator small, small increase of time, it makes this power very large, and therefore exponents decay. So always there is a moment when we have late stage, and field is described as I before told you, this only one term. So practically, practically, you follow me. We don't derive anything, so you have to, you don't have choice, you have to believe me. So what is nice, what is nice? Nice is the following, regardless, play, die, uh, isometrical body, always magnetic field caused by confined conductor behave in this way. What is interesting, of course, at the beginning, at, un, at, un, uh, unlike ring, early stage is not exponential behavior. More complicated. Then with increasing time, role of next terms becomes smaller, 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 smaller. And at late stage, we again, we again have effect caused by one time constant, one, one term. That's the power of model which I gave you with current ring. Practically, practically, all those theoreticians who are involved in solving inverse problem in time domain mainly pay attention how to find time constant and how to find first coefficients. Because all battle, all fighting in interpretation mainly takes place in late stage. Early stage always forbidden for several reasons. One of them, no influence of conductivity. Level of geological noise is high. Now, that's how I understand it. Now, we have five minutes, if I understand correctly. Correct? Let me choose another part and discuss with you frequency domain. Using again this model of current ring. We will, I only, before we have, since we have few minutes, let me only ask you one general question. Do you know it or you don't know it? Does not mm, tell me honestly something. Or you will, you will, I hope you will tell. Now, one question which I would like to discuss with you. I have sinusoidal current. Or it's better, sinusoidal magnetic field. That's much better. Sinus, omega, T, I'm sorry. T, or uh, I don't write correctly. Omega T minus phi. Do you agree with me? It's amplitude. Do you agree? That's phase. That's circle frequency. Omega equal to pi f. Now, more difficult question. That's the real out. Honestly, I was not going to ask you this question, so now more serious question. How we can present this oscillation in different way? That's uh, how? You see, I, I know you are right, but, but it will be mathematics. I'm asking about, oh, okay, I am ready. How? Imagine that. Very good. So, but that's what, that's, I, maybe I didn't formulate clearly my question, but that's the way. Now, but is there another way which reflects our measurements? What is huh? Product of? Time function of, sorry? I did not as 
Psalm function represented as a circle? Circle? No, that's not what I'm interested. Oh, that's what I have asked. Do you agree with me if I write equal B not Z cosine phi let me write plus in order to remove discussion about plus minus cosine phi times sinus omega t what I have to add school not university not university it's a high school it's a sixth grade huh? plus plus B not Z sinus phi cosine omega t. Correct? It's true? true? Now, can I, let me introduce notation A equal uh, B not Z cosine phi. B equal B not Z sinus phi. Can I write this expression as I sinus omega t plus B cosine omega t. Is it correct? Now, what did we do? So we presented magnetic field in two forms. That's one form, that's second form. Which is better, which is worse, which is real, which is not real? Let us discuss this question, and then we will discuss about the relation between them. Then we will deserve break. Uh, a couple of minutes more. <laughs> hmm? How you would compare, which is... Can you say, let me help you, can we say it if at some point my magnetic field changes a sinusoidal function, I can plot this graph, correct? And tell that's my amplitude, that's my phase. So I see one sinusoidal oscillation with amplitude and phase. As concerns amplitude, more or less clear. And what does what this face mean? What is the meaning of the face? When you say your oscillation has face 30 degrees, first of all, face depends on time. Hmm? Please look on, before agree with me, I know you would like to agree with me, but please make me favor, look in the formal face, but in this way, depends on time or not. Huh? What, uh, maybe, what do you mean face? Oh, maybe we understand each other. What you mean face? What I call face, unfortunately, F here. Did you mean this face? Huh? Yes or no? Yes. Well, then, then I don't agree with you. Now, that's often called initial phase, or often we speak phase, loudly, as I did, phase. Now back to my question, this phase F depends on time or not? No, no. Argument depends on time, omega t plus phi. Now, again, let us look from practical point of view. Some of you worked in the field, you know, measured phase. When you say, Phase of magnetic field 30 degree. What does it mean with this F? The difference between the your measured signal and the transmitted signal in degrees or whatever you measure. But when, when you mean transmitter signal, what do you mean? I completely agree with you, but I need only clear. The fundamental, uh, the primary field. The oh. Oh, oh, correct. So, when you say phase equals 30 degree, you unconsciously 
think about another sinusoidal oscillation with which you do compare. Often we compare with current, for example, or something else doesn't matter in all in different systems we compare with different quantities, usually with current in transmitter or primary magnetic field. So for instance, here we say our sinusoidal oscillation is shifted by 30 degrees with respect to reference signal current in transmitter or another magnetic field. If we measure vertical horizontal component of magnetic field, often we measure phase shift between them. Or if we measure magnetic field uh, itself, we compare with current in transmitter. Now, that's one presentation. Of course, it's dependent on time. It's always now, uh, what does this presentation mean? And which is better? I still insist on the comparison. <laughs> of, of, we will use it. Today we will use it while it's so a small preparation. Mm -hmm. hmm? What is it? How you read this equation? I am a constant when I'm looking at the frequency. Sorry? A and B is constant, so learning the argument. A and B constant, correct? That's I do agree. So you can say, you can say two ways of thinking. Both are equivalent. In some cases, one better than another, and vice versa. And we will make judgment from my point. You can say, sorry, I don't have one sinusoidal oscillation. I can look at this function from completely different point of view. I have two oscillations. Not one, two. Two. One has amplitude A, another amplitude B. One changes sinus omega t, another cosine omega t. They exist simultaneously. So it's not too bad mentally imagine if I have sinusoidal oscillation with some phase shift. In effect, I have two sinusoidal oscillation. One changes sinus omega t. Another cosine. I use the word sinusoidal for all canonical functions. So, if, for example, in my transmitter, current changes cosine omega t, for instance, for instance, then I say I compare this as to oscillation with behavior of current in transmitter. I tell this oscillation is in. Hmm? in phase because it changes synchronically. This oscillation is shifted by 90 degrees. So one has amplitude A, another amplitude B. If my current changes sinus omega t, I say this is in phase component. In phase does not have meaning if you don't compare with your reference. When you do compare, you say, oh, that's the case. For, um, so instead of one sinusoidal oscillations, you in effect have always two. It concerns current, it concerns magnetic field, electrical field, always correct. Now, before we stop, well, before we stop, are there this took well in this way field is characterized amplitude and phase correct in this way field, uh, uh, field characterized by also two numbers which are these two numbers a and b do are they related with each other 
Hmm? How? I would like to write B not Z. I don't know why I wrote B not Z. B not Z equal what? Through A and B. Sorry? We are far away from geophysics. Far away. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad I like to discuss because I don't be... I am too old. Yeah, you can excuse me, but I would like to make be mentor. So I give, share with what I believe it's useful, how to useful to think. I do believe it's useful to understand simple facts. Relationship between uh, B not Z uh, and um, A and B. Correct. Amplitude of oscillation equals square root A square plus B square. You can check it. You take square of this quantity, square to this quantity. Remember that sine square plus cosine equal 1. And you will get this answer. Now, uh, could you tell me, can I find face if I know how to, re how to relate face with A and B? That's A, correct? That's B. True? So therefore, B over uh, A is equal tangent of the face. So face equal tangent opposite B over A. So you can information the same. That's what I wanted to, to say. And finally, before we stop, before we stop, final question. Which presentation is better and which is worse? Which is real, which is not real? The sum of the two signals are not real. Or real. So, because what, for instance, my question is uh, this one presentation, that's another presentation, yes? Which is real, which is not real, which is better, which is worse? Again, my colleague could, could correct me, or at least express different point of view, but I have point, very simple point of view. If you are in the field with equipment which measures amplitude or phase, that's real. If you don't have this equipment, but you have equipment which measures, that's real. That's all. So, but it's not, see, taking into account the fact that there are equipments which measures in phase quadrature amplitude, not too bad to know both presentations and understand they are related to each other. So, in most in the most progressive, most industrial equipments which widely used in frequency domain, we do measure quadrature in phase. So it's not too bad to pay attention to this expression. And very seldom, practically very seldom. But example classical was magnetotelluric sounding, but they it it's gone practically from industry as we discussed yesterday. Uh, this approach is used only in as magnetotelluric, maybe control for some who knows. Yeah. Yeah, left, then yeah, we leave it on the board when we leave for break. I'll yes. show you in 90 seconds why it's preferred by electrical engineers to measure that too. So that's the story. That's the story. I remind you the main important uh, re definition of sinusoidal oscillations. Now let us solve again to understand what would be the secondary field if in the same transmitter, the same our body, our ring, instead of step function here, we have sinusoidal oscillation. So no more step function before we had the step function. Now generator sinusoidal oscillation. Clear? Completely new. Now, 
since current changes the sinusoid of C, therefore primary magnetic field changes as sinusoid. Therefore primary flux through our own body changes sinus omega That's what I wrote. Now, let me tell you something which is very, very important. Very important, it's not applied only for <coughs> electromagnetics. <coughs> when I use step function excitation, tell me please, induced currents in our body will behave as also step function? No, no. It was exponent. True? We, our input was step function. Output was exponent. So, there is no need to, it's dangerous to think that each time behavior of input and output as function of time, the same. Classical example, step function excitation, you get exponent. You will make arbitrary function impulse, you will not get induced current also impulse. So there is general, this, there is a difference between input and output as function of time. I call current in transmitter input, input, a current in uh, or body out. That's what we are looking for. Correct? Now, but there is one amazing exception which is used everywhere in all methods, especially seismic electromagnetic. There is one exception. If we deal with linear system, linear, for example, this system is linear because described by uh, linear differential equations. When you have in the, for H linear system, I we deal only with linear system. If we don't deal with linear, it's nonlinear. Deal with nonlinear system, it's a great exception. Iron rule is, if your input sinusoidal function, output also will be sinusoidal function. It's a very pleasant fact. You don't need to think what would be the shape, at least your output. Even moreover, not only sinusoidal function, but with the same frequency. If your input wireless size, size, seismic, you can sinusoidal oscillation, exactly the same sinusoidal oscillations will geophone measure with the same frequency. In all frequency methods, electromagnetics, profiling, loop, magnetotelluric, or doesn't matter, you have sinusoidal oscillation input, output will be a sinusoidal oscillation exactly with the same frequency, not different. Is that in, uh, in a free space or in conducting? Everywhere. What about um, attenuation? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. It for diffusion when energy transforms into heat, uh, when energy propagates, always iron rule. Maxwell equations have one feature about which I did wa don't want, didn't want to talk. Now time to say they are classical examples of linear differential equations. This example is also linear differential equation. You don't have products current times derivative. All terms current, constant coefficients, current, derivative, so no product. That's one of features of linear equation. And it's beautiful rule. Please, my suggestion, remember. And then you can try to check all your life whether I was right or wrong. You will never find exception. <laughs> so that's very useful concept. It's used. That's the reason why theoreticians solve forward problems in all methods for sinusoidal oscillation. They do uh, instantly. They do know what would be output from point of behavior. 
it will be the same sinusoid, sinusoid with the same frequency. Now, I, but sinusoidal oscillation that is not characterized only frequency. It's characterized by amplitude and phase. That could be different. They could change from point to point. That we know very well. So, taking into account this extremely nice fact, let us find current in our, our body when instead of impulse, we a step function, we have sinusoid. Sinusoid, it means it was started in a stone age. For example, function which has zero value, then sinusoid, it's not sinusoid, it's something else. But when we consider sinusoidal oscillation, it means we are, assume, beginning was at least stone age. Or a few minutes ago, it doesn't matter, for conducting medium. So, let us take into account this fact, taking into account that F naught equals sinus omega t, let us present our current as I sinus omega t plus B cosine omega t. This, pre this presentation does not contradict what I told before. Because, as you remember, that means sinusoidal oscillation with amplitude in some phase. True? Now, if we substitute, so it's our guess, and I do advise you once to do yourself, I will not do it, it's, it's, it's not proper. If we substitute here I in this expression, for instance, if I take derivative, what would happen? Can you help me quickly? It will be omega I times cosine omega T minus B omega sinus omega t, correct? Plus unit divide tau i sinus omega t plus unit divide tau cosine omega t and everything must be equal to what? Minus f not not omega cosine omega t. Do you follow me or not? Or I did some, something very quickly, correct? So I blindly substitute this expression here. Didn't forget to take derivative, didn't forget to divide tau, didn't took into account here minus. Now, how many are known? What we don't know? We know frequency. Frequency must be the same as current in transmitter. But what we don't know? A and B. So we have one equation with two unknowns. Let us solve this useful engineering problem. How what to do? Could you could you tell me what I have to do? I return yesterday I mentioned something. Now I'm going to mention it again. Let me collect all terms with cosine. Omega A. Do we have more terms with cosine? I missed something here. Uh, you didn't tell me. A, uh, B. Must be B. So plus B tau. Do we have more terms? Yes, we have F not not omega cosine omega t. True? This term, this term, and this term. Plus Unit divide tau A. A divide tau minus B omega sinus omega t. Everything equals zero. True? 
I am not afraid to derive such simple equations here. So now, could you now let us be sure that we understand what if our assumption was correct? If we assume yes, induction current changes a sinusoid, therefore this equation must be valid, correct? Because it must satisfy our this equation. When it could happen? You have A cosine omega t equal B sinus omega t. This equality must take place at all times. True? If we were right. When this equality can take place? It has a relation in phase quadrature component, measurements, etc. When? On A, it means these brackets. B, it means minus these brackets. A and B depend on time. A and B. Do you have here time? No. Do you have here time? No. We are dependent on time from cosine and sinus. When this equality, when it takes place? When A equal zero bravely and B equal zero <laughs> bravely. So, and therefore, you obtain two equations with two unknowns, A and B. It was apparent that we have only one equation. We have two. And when you solve the simple linear equations, uh, A equals zero, B equals zero, you will find out very known expressions. Let me write down. <laughs> Again, our, our current, <coughs> our induced current is a sinus omega t plus b cosine omega t. Solving this equation, we get f not not primary flux, amplitude of primary flux, divide inductance, omega square tau square unit plus omega square square tau square b is equal with accuracy of sign. I don't pay attention now. Sign. Omega tau unit. Omega square tau square. That's amplitude of in phase component. That's amplitude of quadrature component. If we assume current behaves the better. It's not oscillation. In order to make oscillation, we forgot to put what here? Multiply by sinus omega t, yeah, this term by cosine omega t. That's amplitude. So that's amplitude of in phase component, that's amplitude of quadrature component. Now, let us look again. What do you recognize this term? Did we meet it before? Early stage. You remember early stage? That's it. Flux divided by inductance. Do you recognize tau? Time constant. So the same parameters which define time domain define frequency domain. In no room for contradiction. Now, now let us plot graphs of this. Uh, we plot graph of transient response. Now let us consider frequency responses of the field. Here, it's natural to plot omega tau. Omega tau. Here, A and B. Not omega. Omega tau, because field depends on omega tau. Now, I will do the following. I will not plot A and B, but A times L over 
prime, I would like to normalize by this factor because it depends, it does not depend on frequency, it depends on primary field and geometry. Do you agree it does not depend conductivity? Yes, it does not depend conductivity, it does not depend on frequency, so it's a L multiplied by LF naught. Let us look at the graph. That's quadrature component or out phase component, which is usually measured. What would be behavior at the beginning when omega tau is small? When omega tau is small. Not frequency, but frequency times time constant. How, how you visualize behavior of frequency response? Huh? Z zero, zero, it is okay. Uh, uh, because frequency equals zero, no inductive, constant field. But now I start to increase frequency. What, how this component starts to grow with argument omega tau? Hmm? When I ask, uh, how it depends on argument? Argument omega times tau. Correct? So how it will behave? Quickly, slowly, even can you detect, tell me, what is dependence on um, frequency? Hmm? Let us assume, ready to help me, or I'm ready? You, my question is not clear. First of all, B out phase component or quadrature. Let us pay attention B. And then we will pay attention A. So let us start from B. How it depends on argument omega tau? Huh? Inversely. Inversely, at low frequency. Not low frequency, when case number one, case number one, this beginning when omega tau much less than unit in this range. And this range, much less. Correct, but how? Linear. Vital to say linear. Very vital. Because again, fundamental rule, no exceptions. Never. Always. Regardless form of conductor, shape, dimension, continent, company, always omega tau uh, quadrature component increases linearly. Why linearly? Very simple. If omega tau is very small, it's small with respect to one, neglect it, it then it goes, only numerator makes its job. So at the beginning, linearly. Then when omega tau increases, 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 the minator does not stops to sleep, and this term grows. For example, when omega tau 1, it will be not 1, 2. Finally, when omega tau is very large, what, what happens? Omega tau grows linearly. This term grows denominator square, so it starts to decrease. So if we take 1, not too bad number to remember, omega tau 1, maximum here, happens exactly when one in this model. That's typical behavior of quadrature component. There is no, no exception. Moreover, it's true for conducting medium, for layers. I will explain you later. So, when omega tau less, oh no, less one, we call it low frequency part of spectrum. That's intermediate part of spectrum. That's high frequency part of spectrum. Now, let us look in behavior of in phase companion. And then we high omega tau more than 510. That's high frequency part of spectrum. 
Now, I had. There is no rigid boundary, but certainly not two. Not two. Now, what about in phase component? Can you help me? So we plot graphs of amplitudes of quadrature in phase component caused by currents in confined conductor. Because I will do it together with layer medium, completely different story. Even low frequency will be common for quadrature. <coughs> now, what about in phase? I am ready. Low frequency part of spectrum. Huh? Sorry? Large? What would be uh, large? Quadrature or in phase at low frequency part of spectrum? Why you think? That? So you perhaps you look because square here here first power. Suppose omega tau equal point one. What happens with omega square tau square? Smaller. Order small. Order small. Iron rule. Iron rule for low frequency part of spectrum. Even behavior is the same. It here linear behavior. Here proportional omega square tau square. Always it's correct. Always. For confined conductor. Regardless shape, dimension, as soon as low frequency part of spectrum, that's the key. This is only simple model which illustrates this general case. So, but it starts to increase as parabola, correct? Omega square, tau square. Grow, grows. When omega tau equal one, I suspect they will be the same. Huh? Is it correct? If omega tau equal one. Then the denominator the same, here it also the same. So it equal. What happens next? Huh? Yes. But still grows. Still grows. And then it comes to one. I'm sorry for not accurate people. So we have three ranges, and let us discuss each range. How we can read, first of all, I must, I will explain you low frequency part of spectrum, and I explain you later high frequency in such a way that you, from physical point of view, you will feel that it's valid always. That's important to know. Now, how to read this graph, first of all? You can read it from two, way, you, two ways. You can assume you have one conductor. And start to, it means time constant is fixed. You can change frequency. So you see, you see, but before you see, let me write you again. This is the you agree? This is the induced current. Therefore, frequency responses of secondary magnetic field caused by this current will behave in the same way because Biot-Savart law does not change dependence on time. Now, let us discuss. First of all, time constant fixed. One conductor. I start to increase frequency. Then I can tell this is the frequency response of current or magnetic field caused by inside of conductor. I can look in this graph from different point of view. I can fix frequency and tell, ask myself, I start to change con time constant of the body. What happens with my currents? What happens with my field for bodies which have either different conductivity or simply different time constant? Size, dimension. So it's not too bad to look from two points 
of you. Uh, let us start, it's important, from my point of view, subject, let me tell you a funny story. 1955, I published my first paper with my teacher, my colleague, one colleague, three of us, published 55, you smile, you understand. Uh, uh, it was first paper, it was published in a very good journal, it's uh, called a Journal of um, Geophysical, in, uh, Geophysical Series of Academy of Science. I was at that time 24, 24, yes. And, uh, uh, and we, paper was called A Choice of Optimal Frequency in Inductive Methods of Electroprospecting. At that time we didn't know anything about frequency methods. But what did we know? Our teachers thought completely different, gave us completely different picture. It was time, it's very hard now to, to go to such stone age, but it was the fact, it was the fact. We, we, we thought, as students, I was not yet graduate students, I was in a research group in the laboratory, and we were told that quadrature component and phase component with increasing frequency infinitely increases. The higher frequency, the better. The stronger magnetic field due to conductor. It was such lovely time. It was reality. It was good time. Not because I was young, but it was very, very good interesting time and nothing wrong that it was we, we, we thought incorrectly I sometimes teach incorrectly somebody will be correct me so it's a it's evolutionary process but that was the time so it was the time when it was amazingly new result it was one of the best papers even to my surprise I found uh, I was extremely I, I didn't do practically a lot but Something I, I, I found this graph, that's all. How I found that different story, but, uh, but it was, it was amazing result. Somebody knew it, of course, in, especially in uh, other areas of physics. But, so understanding of this behavior is very, very important, very important. And let us discuss it. First of all, we start from low frequency part of spectrum. When you have to make break, because I I am a little confused with time shift, because of this gentleman. <laughs> ten minutes. Okay, let us ten minutes. It's okay. Yeah. Five ten minutes. Okay, very well. Very well. Let us start and then we can see. Let us make five minutes. So always it's natural to divide in three ranges as early time, intermedium, and late. Let us divide our frequency response or dependence on parameter low, uh, intermedium, and high. When we say low frequency part of spectrum, by no means it means always low frequency. What must be small? Omega tau. For instance, I, when we call low frequency part of spectrum, we don't have words, we don't have better way, but we mean always omega tau less than one. But frequency could be megahertz. It could be 10 minus 5 gertz. Everything depends on time constant. Let us make some exercises without writing. We will finish at this point. I take two spheres. One, for example, sphere uh, one centimeter from salt water, some blood volume, will be large, time constant, or small. What do you think? Huh? Let us do it. Even one meter. Let us take one meter. 
one meter of salt water, what would be the time constant? Gamma, 10, 10 0.1 nanometer. 10 minus 6, what I wrote, 10 minus 6? Huh? Mu. Mu, mu, mu. 4 pi, 10 minus 7, 10 minus 6. A squared, 1 meter, that is why I took 1 meter. You divide by 10. Time constant, 10 minus se 6 second. So how high frequency you can take and still you will be in low frequency part of spectrum. Don't please don't forget omega equal two pi f. If you take f ten kilohertz, ten four, ten five, and omega tau will be point one. Take hundred kilohertz, still will be less than uni. Now, let us take our lovely Earth. What do you think would be time constant if we make mistake and assume conductivity of the rocks? Tau, gamma, resistivity 20 ohmometers, okay? Or oh, hand, let us make uh, tau, even worse, thousand. So completely unrealistic. We we do everything our best to decrease time with a time constant. Let us take gamma one over ten minus three. Correct? Mu ten minus six. Now small detail: radius of the Earth. <laughs> Is there some information <laughs> about radius of the Earth? See six thousand kilometers. It means six, uh, six, ten, six meters. Is it correct? Huh? Six thousand kilometers, six, ten, ten, six meters. So let us take square thirty-six, ten, twelve, divide by ten, pi square ten. It's not reasonable to forget about it. So what we got? 10 minus 9, 4, 10, 3, or what? Hmm? Or what? Time constant. I think, huh? Still, seconds. Time constant is measured only seconds. So if I didn't make mistake, 4,000 Second, therefore, in order to treat Earth at a range of small parameters, frequency must be around 10 minus 4 hmm? uh, omega. Correct? So F, frequency 10 minus 5. So you see how effects conductivity and radius. Let us stop here.